National Park is the second oldest national park in the entire world. Founded on April 26, 1879 by Sir John Robertson, the park was initially formed in response to public health concerns regarding the overcrowded city. Over time, 150.9 kilometers squared of land were developed from mudflats into exotic trees and grasslands that soon supported a full ecosystem of native animals. Originally just named National Park, Royal National Park adopted its new name in 1954 after Queen Elizabeth's first visit the previous year. In 1967, the Fauna Protection Panel and Reserves Branch of the Lands Department created the New South Wales Parks and Wildlife Services that are still in charge of facilitating and protecting the land today. Before its settlement in 1879 that created the park we know today, the land was lived on by the Gwagal people of the Darwal Nation. The Gwagal people lived along the saltwater bays and built their culture through sustainable fishing practices and a deep-rooted relationship to both the land and surrounding waters. They also lived in connection to the whale, as it was the dreaming figure of their community and car carvings of this totem can still be found in the park today. Hello, my name is Alina. I'm a University of Sydney journalist. Today, we are meeting Rachel, a ranger of the New South Wales Parks and Wildlife Services. She's here to discuss both the sociological and ecological issues faced by the Royal National Park. Since the park has been around for 140 years, there's a lot of history between both the indigenous culture and the flora and the fauna to be considered when exploring in today's modern world. I'm good. I'm super excited to help others learn about Royal National Park. Great. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how indigenous cultures and society are integrated within the Royal National Park area? Of course. Royal National Park is on the land of the Gawal people of the Darwal Nation, a group that has existed there for over 36,000 years. Indigenous culture is physically linked to the landscape, flora, and fauna of the area and continues as a living history, so it is necessary that the New South Wales Parks and Wildlife Services recognize the importance of this and allow proper access to the culturally significant sites. So, what specific Aboriginal sites can be found in the Royal National Park? The main Aboriginal site in Royal National Park is the Jim and Headland Coastal Engravings. We are currently working on a project with the Aboriginal community to preserve these engravings by implementing a viewing platform that will limit access to the physical area thus preventing as much damage as possible. It is important to also recognize that all of the landscape is connected and related to the indigenous culture, so all of it must be respected by visitors and park employees alike. The rich history of the park is only one of the reasons that the Royal National Park attracts over 3 million visitors every year. Beautiful beaches, breathtaking cliffs, Exciting bushland and mangroves can all be found within the park. Heathland can be found along the coast with its variety of plants and animals. For bird watchers, this is the perfect spot to see some of the native endangered species. Eucalyptus trees can be observed in the river valleys. Even though koalas have been spotted by some guests, they are rare and not to be expected. Instead, watch out for wallabies, wallaroos and echidnas. Australian bird life in this area also presents itself in its greatest varieties. So try to catch a glimpse of the black cockatoo or listen to the laugh of the kookaburra. The mangroves are home to many different species of fish, crabs and some of the most threatened birds. While quite famous and beloved by visitors, the rock pools like the figure eight pools hold some deadly surprises under their surface. Blue-ringed octopi, whose toxins are extremely fast and deadly, 
can hardly be spotted and occupies most rock pools. Alternatively, one can find some of the best surfing spots at Gary Beach or rest for a while on one of the other 10 beaches in the Royal National Park. Visitors looking for an athletic outlet can explore the park on a mountain bike or rent out a paddle boat for a different view of the park. Between May and November, the coastal walk from Bandina to Oxford gives an exceptional view on the passing waves, presenting visitors with a chance to see them leaping out of the ocean. The famous hikes are a year-round attraction for tourists, with the Royal Coast Track drawing around 90,000 people each year. One of the most recognized sites lies just on its way, the Wedding Cake Rock. So as a visitor, there's clearly much to explore, but that comes along with some ecological issues to be mindful of. Let's get back to Ranger Rachel. Now that we've been over the history of the land, what are some of the major ecological issues that the Royal National Park faces today? Well, unfortunately, there happen to be a lot of different categories of issues. First, since the park has been introduced to many non-native species, we find loads of regional pests. Additionally, it is well known that the Royal National Park has historically been affected by bushfires. These issues have improved with the changes that we are making. However, it is still important to look out. It is still something important to look out for. Lastly, with the massive impact humans have had on the environment, pollution management is a significant part of our work here. Wow. Tell me more about some of the pests that threaten native species. Well, animals introduced during colonization such as foxes, cane toads, deer, and pigs will hunt and prey on our native species, including the over 3,000 species of birds, the southern bullfrog, and even the eastern pygmy possum. They also force competition of food and habitat, habitat resources by eating native plants. That sounds super scary. Is there anything the parks and wildlife services are doing to help? Yes, we focus on native species recovery programs through our research into threatened animals. We also work to educate the community, as we are doing right now, to make sure no further damage is done. Sounds like a good plan. You mentioned a history of bushfires. Are these still so harmful today? The years 1939, 1994, and 2001 saw pretty intense bushfires, but fortunately the bushland recovered well from each of these occurrences. There remains little evidence of these today, and we work to prevent future fires by mapping out previous damage, specifically flammable vegetation areas, and locations of trails with high water supply. Are these bushfires caused by people, or are they natural? Some fires are caused naturally in the dry season, however many are also caused by human activities such as barbecues and campfires, which are actually prohibited. That being said, the biggest human issue is pollution in the park and areas affecting the park. This includes the basic levels such as leaving trash around, all the way up to the major issues our planet faces with climate change and how those affect the ecology of every part. So what can I, as a visitor, do to help? In terms of pests, please work to keep track of your own pets when entering the park, do not dump garden weeds in the area, and make sure to report sightings of cane toads. If you want to go the extra mile, join a volunteer group through our website so you can care for soil, water, plants, and wildlife in our park. Please also follow the rules of not cooking, building campfires, or smoking in the park so you can prevent human-caused bushfires. Lastly, make sure to take all trash you bring into the park out with you. On a daily basis, please also consider the environment so we can try to fix these issues on a global scale. Do you have any other advice for a group of students visiting Royal National Park? Absolutely! Today there is a dangerous craze of doing unsafe things just to get that perfect Instagram picture. Two main sites to watch out for are the figure eight pools and wedding cake rock. Within the last few weeks, many visitors have been injured at the figure eight pools when trying to get into them, as massive waves can unexpectedly come even at a low tide. Additionally, the famous wedding cake rock is scientifically known to be unstable and crumbling, with the potential to fall apart at any time. These are, there are fences in these areas for a reason, so please follow park rules and stay in safe spaces. Thank you, Ranger Rachel, for meeting with me. I feel like I've learned a lot about how to enjoy the Royal National Park in a socially responsible way.